What's up, YouTube? So before we get started with this video, on first take, they're going to be talking about which team is going to have the easiest path to get to the finals, the Lakers or the Bucks. So let's see what they have to say about that. The Lakers or the Bucks? It would be easy to say the Bucks, especially if you just look at the conferences and that their separation from being the top team to the next team is a little bit more. Um, yeah, but it's a lot more closer than one would think. But, you know, you have to think about that Christmas Day matchup. And it showed me a lot. The Bucks, they are an excellent team. They have Giannis Antetokounmpo, the reigning MVP, who's bettering his game. They are also surrounded by an ecosystem that allows him to realize his full potential. What are they, first best rating in defensive rating in the NBA, third best offense or so? But when it comes to the playoffs, the playoffs are a different breed. The game slows down. It's played in the half court. The Bucks lead the NBA in fast break points. You won't get those points. Giannis, he's expanding his game to three. Yeah, but in the playoffs, and we saw this, especially on Christmas Day when all eyes were on him, he, he struggled. Yeah, wait a minute. All eyes weren't on, on Giannis. I can think of another game that a lot of people were watching. And you want to talk about being exposed? What happened to that Laker Clipper game? That was a huge game, too. So let's continue he really sort of got exposed to a small degree. Now, the, place, the pace really slows down, and you dedicate yourself in the playoffs to scouting reports and getting the best of your opponents. And to me, the weaknesses of the Bucks are that, yes, you rely heavy on Giannis, and Giannis is the engine, you know, the one that makes everyone go. Yes, your supporting cast is stepping up so yeah. far. They have a strong supporting cast. 13 guys average double-digit minutes. But the fact of the matter is, when you think about the Lakers, they have a little bit of everything. Now, I know their route is going to be way more difficult, but entering this season, we were talking about dynamic duos. And in the playoffs, star power matters. LeBron James and Anthony Davis, they're a force to be reckoned with. When they're both on the floor, they have the best defensive rating, you know, in the West. Also, if you think about their supporting cast, I think they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe like the way we saw the Sixers athletically on the perimeter defensively, the same way the Sixers neutralized the Bucks, in the sense that you have Avery Bradley, who's a great defender. You have Danny Green, who's an excellent transition defender. But you also have Dwight Howard and JaVale yeah. McGee, and obviously, um, you know, Anthony Davis holding it down in the paint. So these are two different teams with two different paths, but I don't want to yeah. say that we should Chris and the Bucks and say, put them in the playoffs because they still have a lot of questions to be you, answered. Meanwhile, you can rely on the championship experience of the Lakers. You made a lot of... So I'm going to have to go with the Milwaukee Bucks. I think they'll have the easiest chance of getting to the finals. But let's take a look at the Eastern Conference top five teams. So it goes Milwaukee, Boston, Miami, Toronto, and Indiana. So Boston is five games behind Milwaukee. Milwaukee's 31-5. and five. So let's take a, a look at the Western Conference. So the top five, we go to the Lakers, Denver, Clippers, Houston, and Dallas. And Denver's uh, three and a half games behind the Lakers. The Lakers are 28 and seven. So let's take a look at the overall for all the conference. So the top five go Milwaukee, Lakers, Boston, Miami, and Denver. Actually, let's go seven. Denver, the Clippers, and then Houston. So the top three out of five are Eastern Conference teams. So the East is has been it's probably a little bit easier but it's definitely gotten harder because the top three or there's th three teams out of the top five are coming out of um the east so i don't think it's going to be a cakewalk but it's probably going to be easier than being in the west and like i said overall milwaukee's number one the lakers are two the lakers are two and a half games behind milwaukee so it's still close so great points about why the Lakers are a good team. Nobody at this table thinks the Lakers are bad, but the question is, who's more likely to make it to the finals? And the path for the Bucks is better. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily easier because the East is getting stronger. It's not the weak East that it used to be, but you look at how they made it in the playoffs. You say the playoffs are different. They advanced to the conference finals in those same playoffs, and you know who they lost to? The Raptors, and the Raptors are a little bit different this year without the without Kawhi Leonard out there, the, MB, the finals MVP. So if they have to go through this same route with with, they're better statistically by all st statistical measures they're better the playoffs slow down you rely more on adjustments and coaches coach bud is a great coach they're going to be adjusting and moving forward and you go through a weaker division and potentially be end up in a finals or excuse me a weaker conference potentially end up in a conference final against a weaker opponent that's good i think that they can go through that it's more likely that they get through that and they beat the celtics and it's going to be tough to get past the, the size of the 76ers i actually think the 76ers while they're not the best team they're probably the toughest challenge for the Bucs. If they can get past that, I think that's more likely. But you look at that other side, and you don't even have to go all around the conference. You just have to go to one team in the same city. And we all know, I don't think anyone here would argue, before the season, we all agreed that the Clippers...
are a more complete team and probably a better team. And when they play the Lakers, they win and they appear to be better. The Clippers may not have the best record because the Clippers don't seem to care about home field advantage. They care about getting to the playoffs healthy with their stars. And I think, I think it's more likely that the Bucks can beat the Raptors and the 76ers and maybe the, the surging uh, Celtics. It's much more likely that they can beat those three teams than the Lakers are going to pull past what, the, the Clippers. What do we Yo, so so as far as the Lakers and Clippers, um, so they both have their strengths. So the Lakers are just cleaning house with everybody in the Western Conference. They have the number one, um, the ranked number one in the Western Conference and number two overall. Um, so but on the other hand, you have the Clippers. The Clippers aren't necessarily worried about winning every single game. But when it's time to play, go against the big heavy hitters, they take care of business. Like I said, they beat the Lakers twice, and that's huge. So they both kind of have... Uh, um, strength and weaknesses on each other. But I think, I don't know, it's going to be hard to choose who's going to do what. Um, but let's go back to Eastern Conference. So I think Milwaukee is definitely uh, going to have the easier path. Um, so I think probably I would say the 76ers and uh, the Toronto Raptors will probably give the best fight um, for Milwaukee. And it's going to be kind of tough because I, if, if Milwaukee does make it to the finals and they have to go against either the Clippers or or the Lakers, whoever, if they're probably going to have to, he's probably going to have to go against a duo. And I don't know if Giannis can take care of business for a whole series. I understand he beat the Lakers and the Clippers, both of those guys, but can he do it in a series? I don't know, because that's going to be a tall order to have to go against one of the best duos in the league. But I think Milwaukee can definitely get there. It, it'll be um, a little harder than it has been in past years, but it'll be easier for them than it will be for whoever comes out of the West. So let's continue. We know about the Bucks. We know that, yes, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, right? But what have they given us answers to? Yes, they're a dominant team. Um, but if you look at their supporting cast, I know there's Ursan Ilyasova or Sanity going on. Um, and they have a lot of different players stepping Marcus up each down. and every night, right? But what do we know about them in the playoffs? There's a lot of questions still to be answered, which is why I'm not going to christen them getting there to the what NBA you know Finals. The, what but what do we Lakers? know about the Lakers? We do know that LeBron James did go to eight straight finals. We do know that Anthony Davis is a certified talent. And if you think about a team that has two star players that can touch every inch of the court they're going to beat the Clippers they're going to beat the Clippers the, the... yeah exactly so again you can't necessarily say that because the Clippers have heat too this duo was all over the place uh, in the Western Conference. But again, like I said, both teams have their strengths and weaknesses. So the Lakers are cleaning house, the number one in the Western Conference. But when it comes down to fighting or going against some of the heavy hitters, they kind of struggle. And they definitely struggled a loss against with the Clippers. On the other hand, the Clippers, they take care of business against the heavy hitters, but they don't necessarily, they're not, they don't have a turned on uh, every night. So it's, it's kind of deceptive of who's going to do what. But again, I think Milwaukee Bucks, I think they're definitely, um, it's going to be tough if they make it, but it'll be easier than what's coming out of the West. And I think the Philadelphia 76ers will give them a, possibly some trouble and the Toronto Raptors uh, could give them some trouble because I feel Paul Gasol or Gasol, whatever the brother is, can match up well with Embiid. But let's continue. And when you're talking about the Bucks and them, you know, being able to be healthy and towards the end and have an easy way, that's the same way that you have to think about the Lakers because I've been the one saying that they need to load manage LeBron James because if they load manage LeBron they James, which they did not do on Christmas Day, that will allow him to play to his full utmost potential. And I think that will change the outcome when we talk about Clippers, Lakers. Showdowns. Here's one thing I will say, and I, 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 you know, I'm a huge Lakers fan. One thing that really worries me is about when, when LeBron goes to the bench. Who's the, who's, who's the primary ball handler? Who's, who's going to be the guy when, when 80 is just on the floor? Because, quite frankly, the Los Angeles Lakers are a, t a totally different team. When LeBron has to sit down and it's just AD on the floor, they become basically like the Pelicans when, when AD was, was a part of the that's, Pelicans. That's and, that's a, point, yeah. and, that, and, and to me, that's a big issue considering yeah. perimeter play is going to be a big yeah. part of the play, especially in the playoffs. We talk about everything in the half court. And the one thing that we know when you look at like the Los Angeles Clippers, you talk about perimeter play. They got three guys on the perimeter where you talk about, you know, Kawhi Leonard, uh, uh, Paul, Paul George, George Lou and, Will, and, yeah, and, I guess you. All those guys Excellent. on us, the, you know, all on, all, all the big time defenders on defenders on the perimeter. And I think that's going to be that's going to be a big deal when it comes to the postseason. I, I think the difference is. I don't know. Like I said, the Lakers and Clippers, they both have, you know, their strength and weaknesses. Um, so maybe the Lakers aren't as deep as the Clippers, but LeBron James, Anthony Davis, um, and what Kuzma, well, Kuzma's kind of 
hot and cold. Uh, and Dwight Howard, those guys are definitely balling out of control right now. But the only thing is, like I said before, they struggle when it comes to the heavy hitters and especially against the Clippers. So it's kind of a toss up on who's going to do what. So I don't know. Let's continue. We know LeBron James will be on the floor when it comes to the NBA playoffs. We know Giannis will, but they will treat him differently right. come playoffs. And if you watch that Christmas Day game, you saw that they were playing four on five, sagged off of him, but disrespected you, but you, but him, which made, my, it, made it liability to me. Here's, but my, I, here's my question to you about sure. cause, uh, to secondary playmaker. Because, well, no, well, Philly, no, well, Philly, Philly to me seems like a front running team because they came out there on Christmas Day and had a, had a great game plan, but then they don't follow it up in, in, in subsequent but opponents. I will, I will That's Exactly, Jerome B. He can't maintain it. I know when he got when he uh who was it Charles Barkley dumped on him. I know and B. Came back and he got thirty eight points or whatever. But still, you got to see that consistently. And Ben Simmons is struggling with the shots. Actually, not even struggling with the shots because he's not taking any shots. So that's kind of a problem right there. That's what I'm saying. Probably Toronto might be able to match up the best. Uh, against the Bucks because I I don't know I I'm just seeing Toronto probably putting a little bit better work than consistent work than what the Seventy uh, Sixers can so let's continue. That's the deal about let me, Philadelphia. Let me tell you about Philly and I'm gonna keep it real I'm gonna keep it one hundred right here. Philly has young stars and their egos. They're sort of boxing each other out for egos. Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. It is easy for the Philadelphia 76ers to keep their stuff together for one night on Christmas Day when all the eyes are on them. It's harder when you're young and you're growing stars and doing that 82 games. If they do that 82 games, I have them in the East. But they don't. The, right. the, the more mature game, team a, is the Bucs. In a seven-game series against, a, against, you know, Giannis, and we know Giannis is coming. But let's talk about the motivation because we haven't even addressed Joel Embiid because who was the one that lost in the semi? finals of the East to the Raptors. It was Joel Embiid who right. cried, and he changed his whole mindset so far this year. Yes, yeah. he did. What do you mean he changed his whole mindset? But when you met up with Toronto again, he put up a goose egg, right? I'm pretty sure it's Toronto. Uh, Joel Embiid put up a goose egg. And I, like I said, there's a reason why Charles Barkley jumped on his back, because he hasn't been consistent with it. He hasn't been consistent at all. And neither has Ben Simmons. So let's not say that, you know, oh, last year, you know, uh, Jarrell and B was changed when he got beat by the Toronto Raptors and he was crying. All so pretty much it's kind of looking like he cried for nothing. Because I think they're, what, in sixth or seventh place right now? So I don't know. Let's continue. If you heard, if you heard, no, 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 no. let me, let me tell you the mindset because I watched the game. I, let me tell you the mindset because I watched the game and after in the post game interview, he said, y'all, all I care about is the playoffs. A lot of people, Charles Barkley, Shaq included, were talking about how I'm not motivated. I'm not playing hard. This is an 82 game season. This is a guy that's dealt with health. He just wants to get to the playoffs healthy. And then he said, then you'll hear me talking trash.